If you're anything like me, you've probably created a lot of very boring Excel spreadsheets. You've created so many boring Excel spreadsheets that you've looked at a spreadsheet and just thought to yourself, gee, I wish I could just pre-populate data. I wish there was a way that instead of having a blank Excel spreadsheet, I can have numbers, I can have values pre-populated so that I can save myself a bunch of time and heartache. Well, in programming, something like this exists. We can actually pre-populate our objects with data with something called a constructor. As soon as you utilize the new keyword, as soon as you create a new object, C Sharp is going to give you the opportunity, the chance to input data, to pre-populate data into your objects. You can put data there before anything else. But the bad thing about constructors is that they are very, very easy to miss because they look like regular methods and you can easily miss them if you don't pay attention to a few very important details. Take a look at the middle of this class. This right here looks like a method, but in fact, it is not. Also, notice that it has the same exact name as the class. This is the key distinguishing feature to identify a constructor. Also, notice one other thing. There's no other keywords here because a constructor never has a return type. Now that you can correctly identify a constructor, let's hop into VS Code and let's actually code one up. So first things first, I'm just gonna go over to the left here and I'm going to create a new C Sharp class and I'm going to call this real estate because I'm in a real estate state of mind right now. Next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to create a very simple constructor with the knowledge that we just gained on the whiteboard. I'm going to go into here and since we know, now know that a constructor has the same name as the class, what we can do is just go ahead in here and create one. Now constructors are 99.99% of the time going to be public, but if you want to, you could leave this off, but if you leave this off, it's going to be internal. So I personally like to just create a public constructor myself. And all that we can do is go into here and just put whatever code that we want. We could just say, I run first. And what's going to happen is you probably guessed is that it's just going to run the constructor when it's first created. This is kind of a boring example. Let's do something a little bit more fun. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to assign what's called a field. And a field is designed for specific scenarios like this. Now, notice that what I'm doing is creating a private field. A field should always be private. And since we need to store the address for our real estate, I'm just going to put address. Feel free to put whatever you want to. Now, you may be tempted to go up here and use a proper but you don't want to use properties to set the data from the constructor. We'll talk about properties here in a second because we're going to build a property on top of our field, but let's not get too carried away. The next thing that we can do is we can go within our constructor here and we can add a variable. And this variable is going to allow us to pass in values before the constructor is created. And what I can do is I can go down here, I can go address, I can actually put in the address and notice something here that this private field has an underscore and the constructor parameter does not. And that is done by convention so that we can pass things in. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, let's go back to our program.cs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type out my type. I'm going to um, give it a name. We'll say our real estate is going to be Elm Street. And we'll go ahead, new it up and notice something. Whenever I try to new it up, I now get a red squiggly line. And it's going to tell me there is no arguments given that corresponds to the required parameter address. And basically what that means is you need to pass in this data. You need to pass a string into the constructor function. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over into here and I'm going to pass in Elm Street. And you have absolutely just initialized data, but we have one very bad problem. If we go into Elm Street, we created a private field. We can't actually access this. And if we dot into it, we don't get anything. We don't get any type of property. We don't get any type of method. So how are we actually going to access this data that we just initialized? What we're going to do is we're going to create a prop here. We're going to create a property. Now, once again, key difference, this is a field. 
this is a property. And we're going to build a property on top of our field. Now, if this doesn't make sense, just hang on. What we'll do is first, we're, we'll give this a string type. Of course, it's a string. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to capitalize this. Notice something very important. A property is always capitalized. A field is always going to be lowercase and have an underscore in front of it. And this is going to give us the best of both worlds. We can privately initialize our constructor data, but we can also manipulate it down here with these gets and sets. But what's even the point of having a get and set? The point of having a get and set is this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here, I'm going to bring the get down, I'm going to bring the set down, I'm going to bring this extra address down, I'm also going to bring this bracket down again, and until, uh, the linter will take care of this and make it look really good. And what we can do is this, we can do a arrow function, we can manipulate our private field, and we can add logic in here. We can add breakpoints that can control how we access this data. We can also control how we set the data with crazy looking syntax like this. And this may look kind of crazy, but we have this contextual keyword called value and this almost acts like a function parameter so if i go over here and i go over and try to change the address so if i wanted to maybe change it after i created it i now want to be main street this main street is going to be passed into this value keyword and look at this not only do we get the benefits of the initialization of the constructor we can now safely manipulate our data because we can control how it's manipulated and this will give us very robust code and allow us to once again safely be able to manipulate the values that we initialized in our private field anyways hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did make sure to smash that like button smash that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching